As you can see below me, there are steps here as we're descending uh, tens of meters underground, actually. Right now we're about 15 meters underground, but we keep going lower and lower through this uh, step system here uh, in the tunnels. And they believe around uh, at least 12 hostages were kept in this tiny little catacomb here. You can see in the back there, there's actually a fan on the wall because it's actually so hot and humid out here that people will probably uh, quickly dehydrate. Uh, this, these metal bars uh, that were used to keep the hostages in, they believe these were actually installed quite recently. Uh, you can see even here, the, the work is actually looks quite new rather than most of the other things here underground. We're now in one of the bathrooms of the main compound. And you can see uh, tiles uh, made to look uh, like, a, like a beach. This is part of the reason they think that actually senior uh, Hamas officials would have stayed here. This is not something they would have put up uh, quickly for hostages, but rather something that would have been uh, for the VIPs uh, of Hamas. Uh, but here you can see again a cage door. They think the cages were actually added afterwards for the hostages. We've got uh, bed frames, which you don't usually see. You usually see just mattresses on the floor. Here we have the kitchen, sink, coffee pot, uh, things to clean dishes, gas for a stove here. Uh, you can see uh, electrical outlets. Again, um, they were able to live here uh, underground for a while. It's not clear precisely how the discovery of this tunnel complex changes the IDF's equation here. Israeli military officials did not say whether they knew where the hostages who were held there are now, nor do they say where the Hamas leaders are now. Usually by the time that the Israeli military arrives at these underground prisons for the hostages, the guards and their human bounty are already long gone.